Hey, good morning. morning. Would you please turn in your Bibles? That means you're not reading. Sit in uh, in your Bibles. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 30. 2 Chronicles chapter 30. And, And again, if you're not familiar with that, just look in the table of contents. It's all good. What book? Chapter 30. Beautiful. Second Chronicles chapter 30. With that said, um, we'll take a, a minute or two to pray because um, you know that we normally go through the, we go through, we've been going through the book of Luke. What book have we been going through? Luke. And we go chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and that's our style, if you will. And I love that style because um, it never allows, it, it, it deals with what we're going to deal with that Sunday. Like, for example, if we're in Luke 11, let's say, I can't run away from that. Whatever it says, it says. Amen? And so I can't run from that. And, and, and the reason why I mention that to you is because, you know, sometimes, like, you just, those, those, those um, Bible teachings that jump around and are never on any particular book, if you will, they're very convenient because, you know, you can always touch on the, all the positives, right? You always touch on all the positives and, and, and never sin is confronted. Say amen if you're with me, right? And that's why Paul would say, hey, you can have a lot of teachers and teachers will teach, but there's only one pastor and there's only one father, if you will. And he's always going to confront. Say amen if you're with me, right? Um, See, I, I've, and stick with me here because I know that the, the trend now is not to spank your kids. And that's okay, man. If that's your trip, that's fine. If that's how you roll, that's fine. No, I know Caleb gets plenty of spankings. I know that. <laughs> um, but when we were, <laughs> by the way, fact, fact, that, that's not a lie. That's a fact. Uh, segunda de crónico, crónica, with an A at the end, thank you, segunda de crónicas, anybody hear French, no, because I would have, because I would have uh, given it to you in French also, okay, 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 I'm going to surprise you one of these days, segunda de crónicas, you got that right, good, um, real quickly, so, well, let's move on. Are you there in Second Chronicles chapter 30? You know that we're normally in the book of Luke, but as I was uh, worshiping the Lord there, which by the way, man, fantastic worship, um, just the Lord stirred my heart to go back to Second Chronicles chapter 30, which by the way, um, that's the challenge that we took up on Wednesday, the story of Hezekiah, which is this king that Israel or Judah had. And you find the story in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 28 through verse to, to chapter 32, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You got that? So on Wednesday night, we had prayer time and we also looked at Hezekiah and the power of prayer. And so the challenge was, when we left here on Wednesday, was, hey, read, continue reading the story of Hezekiah, chapter 28 through 32. So last night, my wife and I, Last night, we read a chapter a day, and last night was chapter 30. And so this morning, as we were worshiping, you know, the Lord just stirred my heart to share chapter 30 with you guys, and just to kind of go through it. Um, And so there's two things that I want you to focus in on, in in the midst of a lot of other things. Number one, being engaged. Okay, and I'm not talking about engaged, okay? By the way, Willie got engaged. Amen. Amen. But now we want the wedding. And like tomorrow, or like I told them yesterday, right? But it's all good. It's going to happen yesterday. Anyway, so, but I'm not talking about that engagement. I'm talking about you being locked in. You being what? Locked in, right? You being locked in, being engaged. The second thing that I wanted to share with you as I was worshiping the Lord there, kind of put in my heart, I even wrote it down, um, prioritizing your battles, 
prioritizing your battles. In other words, listen, majoring on the majors, not majoring on the minors. Let me say that again so that we're all clear. Majoring on the majors, not majoring on the minors. In other words, prioritizing your battles. Knowing what battles to engage in and what battles just to let go. And why is that? And that's because we want to preserve our strength. We want to preserve our sanity, if you will. Say amen if you're with me. I want you locked in. What do I want you? Locked in, right? Because that's what we're going to discuss today. Being locked in, being responsible for your walk. Being responsible for your walk. For your Christian walk. Being responsible for that which God has for you. And, um, and um, let me give you a quick example. And I'm going to bring him up, but it's no big deal. We, some of you know Ulysses back there. Uh, Ulysses, can you raise your hand, bro? I don't mean to... to there you go, my bro. I don't mean to uh, embarrass you, but you're not an embarrassed guy, I can tell. And it wouldn't matter. <laughs> we're going to embarrass you anyway, my bro. Point is that um, we're an equal embarrassment place here right but it's all good with you my bro i know amen bro thank you i appreciate that uh, and by the way next to ulysses that blonde lady there who apparently is his mom which i was about to follow her backwards when i told her birthday's tomorrow am i correct so happy birthday god bless you we pray for you that the lord would give you wisdom so that you would know how to number your days, as the book of Psalm chapter 90 says. Amen? Can we say amen to that? Amen. That's our desire for her. And so we rejoice in the Lord that we get to see her today and say happy birthday to her. With that said, um, being responsible for your walk, Ulysses is a boxer. Some of you know that. He's got a fight coming up, and he's had plenty of fights. As a matter of fact, I've seen two of them already. He's responsible for his, him being in shape to be able to scrap it out. Say amen if you're with me. You getting the point? He's responsible. I'm not responsible for him. He's got a scrap coming up in March. Am I right? Right? He's responsible for that. I can be home. I can pray for him. It's him. He's the one that's going to scrap. <laughs> I'm probably going to be on the sidelines cheering for him, but he's going to be trading punches. It's his responsibility to be engaged and to be, um, and, and to, he's responsible for his walk if you will, when it comes to his career. And so I give you that illustration so that you would focus in on, listen, you're responsible for your walk in the Lord. Nobody else is. Oh, you have me. I will text you. I will call you. But at the end of the day, listen, I'm not your mommy and I'm not your daddy or you're mine or you are not of mine. And at the end of the day, you're going to stand before the Lord. I won't stand in your, in your place. And you won't stand in my place. We're all going to be there. And I've shared this with you many times. And this is why I encourage you sometimes. Come on, man. Let's go. The day is going to come where your name is going to be called. And you're going to stand before Him. And you're going to give an account of, the, of that which has been entrusted to you. Eyes that see. A mind that can think. Um, legs that can walk. An, an ability to make money so that you can put food on the table and then you can also contribute, you're, you're going to give an account. And I've shared with this with you before, when your name is called, I'm going to be cheering for you, man. I'm going to be clapping. I know that dude. I know that woman. But at the end of the day, you're going to walk up by yourself and you're going to stand before the king. It's not going to be a judgment thing if, he, if, if you belong to him already. But I got to tell you, there's going to be an opportunity for you to get some crowns, for God to say, well done, listen, my good and my faithful servant. I don't know about you, man, but I want to hear that desperately. I have come to the point in my life where I don't want to waste time with anything. I want my life to be about that. Does not mean I don't watch the dolphins? Three oh five in the house, baby, until the day I die. So it doesn't matter. Straight up, man. Doesn't mean I don't watch the heat. But man, those things are secondary to me. I want my life to count. 
I want to be engaged. I don't want to waste time with things or people that are not about Jesus. And so those are the two things that I want you to focus in on today as we pick up here in 2 Chronicles chapter 30. And listen, even right now, be in prayer. Because I wasn't planning on talking about this. You know, and um, you know, if you've been here any length of time, I'm not a guy who uses notes per se. You know, um, man, doesn't mean I'm unprepared. I remember I was in Peru one time and, and we did a, a conference and I, I was asked to speak there. And so I spoke, you know, I spoke and, and I'm not a guy with notes and I spoke and I taught in Spanish and one of the guys came up to me after and he says, man, I want to be like you. And I'm like, what are you talking about, guys? First of all, if you know me, you don't want to be like me because you don't know what's in this heart, man. And you don't know what goes on in this mind sometimes, man. And by the grace of God, I have been saved. But um, he said, man, I, I like the fact that you don't use notes. And I said, listen, guy, don't get confused here, man. This is 25 years of the word. This is 25 years of being focused, un being unfocused, walking strong, falling on my face, um, being reprimanded and chastened and disciplined by the Lord in a mighty way. So don't get caught up with that, I told him. Get in the Word, man. Get in the Word because that's the bottom line. So I say that with you because sometimes I'm here and I'm like, Lord, what do you want to speak to these people about? I know what I'm going to teach on, but what do you want? You know, Luke 11 or Luke 10 or, or 1 Samuel on Wednesdays, whatever might be the case. Lord, what do you want to tell these people? See, I don't want to just talk. I don't want to just talk. I could be doing anything this morning. You could be doing anything this morning. Look, I'm like shocked that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come here on a Sunday morning in this beautiful place, <laughs> a cafeteria, which doesn't smell that good sometimes. Right? Is it just me? But sometimes you walk in and you're like, man, they've been cleaning this with like dirty rags. You know that dirty rag smell? Anybody familiar with that? There's a restaurant that my wife and I used to go to to South Miami, but I don't go there anymore. I'm not going to tell you what the name of it is because, man, every time you walk in, it's just a dirty rag smell. You feel like telling them, dude, use some mistolin or something, man. <laughs> Limpito, you know? <laughs> it's some stink. Stop using those rags, bro. They mask the smell, you know? But, like, I don't know. I guess they're used to it already. And so I just don't want to talk, man. I'm not an eloquent man. <laughs> So it's got to be the Holy Spirit that speaks today through this man and that we would get it, man, and that we would get it in this short time that we have left. Got your Bibles there? Second Chronicles chapter 30. Remember what I told you. By the way, real quickly, would you look to the side? Tell somebody, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, man. God loves you. Amen. Thank you, Christy. Jesus loves you, my bro. Praise the Lord. Remember that. Because at the end of the day, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And so let me give you the quick background. Some of you that were here on Wednesday night, you know because you got the quick background already. And prayfully, you have been following the, the plan of reading up to chapter 32. Today should be chapter 31 if you're reading on your own. Tomorrow we kill it off with 32. But here's, here's the, the quick review, if you will. It's okay, my bro. It's all right, Bubba. It's all good. I know, bro. You know what? That Listen, can I tell you that happens to me too, bro? It, 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 I'll turn it off and it just turns on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good, bro. Security. Actually, he's one of our security, so disregard. Disregard. Anyway, um, let me give you the background, man. There was, this great, there was this once great, proud nation. And their name was Israel. And they followed after God. Not perfectly, but they were present. Let me say that again. Not perfectly, but they were present. In other words, they were just human beings who had their slip-ups and had their skip-ups and had their, their falls, but they were present when it came to worshiping the Lord. Say amen if you're with me, right? And that's my desire for you, if the truth be told, for 2019. Darius and I have been praying for you guys. 
And, and by the way, if you want to know what we're praying, I'm going to tell you right now. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And you know what? We're going to pray that right now. I'm going to pray that right now for us. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses um, 14 through 18. So on this is what we're going to pray right now as we get the teaching going. So, Lord, we thank you for us here today. And for this reason, we bow our knees, Lord, to you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Father, I pray even right now that you would grant us, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened with might. Lord, that we here would be strengthened with might through your Spirit in the inner man. That Christ would dwell in our hearts, O oh Lord, through faith. And that us here today, Lord, all of us, that we would be rooted and grounded in love. And that we would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height. That we would know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. And that we would be filled with all the fullness of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Darius and I, we began praying that for you just yesterday, and we're going to continue to be praying for the, you that, um, and, I, and I encourage you to pray that for each other, and for Darius and I. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. Ephesians what? Verses. So if you're interested in praying for somebody, pray for me, and pray that, right? Because that's what we're praying for you, <laughs> Right? Pastor, pray for me. I got diarrhea. I'm not praying for you because you got diarrhea. I'm going to pray Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. Did you get that? Okay, good. That's what I'm praying for you. Because the diarrhea is going to come and go. But this, this I don't want to come and go. And so I want you engaged. I want you, I know you're not going to be perfect, but I want you present when it comes to the Lord. And that's what I'm praying for you here now in 2019. Engaged and present. Present. Engage with the Lord. Again, the quick background. Here, here there, there, this once powerful nation, it has splintered. It has become now two nations. Two have become one. One has become two. Now, you know that when two become one, they're a lot stronger. But when one becomes two, they become a lot weaker. And this once proud nation, man, now it had splintered. And what you had was two from one. And so they were very, they had become weak. They had become beggarly. This once proud nation that ran the show now was being run. And what you have is this. You had two nations from one. You had the nation of Judah now and the nation of Israel. One kept its name, one didn't. See, because at one point, they were all one and they were called Israel, right? They were, they were one and they were called? Israel. Tell me again. They were one and they were called? Israel. Good. And now they split up. And so one side now was still called Israel, but the other side now was called Judah. And Israel... And by the way, this happened because they were in sin. God bless you. They were in sin. They had rejected God. They had left God. See, at one point they were, they were not perfect, but they were present. Then not perfect became not present anymore. In other words, yeah. Not only am I not perfect, but I don't walk with God anymore, so it doesn't really matter. And God kept warning them and warning them, please come back to me. This is going to cost you. I don't want it to cost you. I love you. Come back to me. Much like you and I as parents, we would never want our children to stray. Amen? We want them close. We want them to listen to instruction. We want them to do what we tell them to do, not because we're the bosses, but because we know what's right. We know much more than they do. This 52-year-old man, he knows a lot more than the 21-year-old kid that lives in my house. Amen? And so I always tell him, buddy, listen. A wise son listens. Because 
you haven't been 52, but I've been 21. And so I know a lot more than what you don't know. And so this was God speaking to his children, please don't go this route. But they were a stiff-necked bunch. They were a prideful bunch. They didn't want to hear. They were going to do it, listen, their way. Oh, you know the type, right? Look in the mirror. <laughs> it's you and it's me if we're not, taking, if we're not like careful. No, I'm going to do it my way. And you know, you hear this all the time. You, you will hear people not doing it God's way for various reasons. But at the end of the day, it's just straight up disobedience. That's all it is. But you'll hear no pastor because it's this and no pastor because it's that and no because of this. And you're like, you know what? At the end of the day, you're just not interested in, in obeying the Lord. And you're just going to pay a massive price. That's it. It might not be today, but it's going to be tomorrow. Fact. And some of you who have taken a big spill, which a lot of you have here, I certainly have, you realize, oh my goodness, this is true. And this is what happened to Israel. They refused to repent. And God had to do what, they had to, what He had to do. And so He allowed this incredibly just um, brutal nation called Assyria to come and to take Israel captive. Imagine, you're sitting at your house, you're chilling out, Man, all of a sudden there's this incredible like wave uh, co that comes into your city and, and they kick down your door and they take you and yeah, some of you are going to put a fight up. I certainly will. But it's going to be futile. They take away your wife. They take away your kids. They take you away. And these people were a brutal people, man. They would, this, was, this was their MO. They would put hooks, literally, hooks in your, in your mouth that would come out here and they would drag you back to their land. The ones that looked kind of strong and can possibly work, they would corral. The rest, let's go. And so they were a brutal, brutal people. And, you, and needless to say, what would happen to the women and to the children? You can just imagine, you're like, ah, you don't even want to think about that, but that's what would happen. And so these people get taken away. And the only thing that's left of this once proud nation is Judah. A little tiny piece of land the size of Connecticut. And I don't know if you can picture Connecticut. <laughs> Some of you might say, what? Yeah, it's in the United States of America. It's way up there, up north. And it's like this. And this is what was left of these once proud, strong people, man, who honored God. And then there's this king that comes onto the scene, and his name is Hezekiah. What's his name? Hezekiah. He's 25 years old, and he comes onto the scene. He's 25 years old, and he becomes king at 25 years old. Think about that. And, and why do I mention that to you? Because, listen, 25-year-old kids should not be kings. They just shouldn't, right? I mean, some can, but most can't. I know at 25 years old... <laughs> Me king? Yeah. Give me the crown. I would have ran everything into the ground. <laughs> Think about that. Who, I mean, but there was a shortage of older men that honored God. Say amen if you're with me. And no offense to any one of you that's 25 or 23 or 22 or 18 Please don't get offended with that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that David was a young boy and he knew more than the people that were older than him. Amen? It, it, it's actually quite embarrassing when you're older and you're not setting the example. Bottom line. So this is what was happening there. You had older individuals, but as we would say in Spanish, muertos. Okay, but not physically dead, right? You get that, right? Just, they're, okay, that didn't go over well, but it, it meant that just, man, they just weren't in tune, right? Dead weight, if you will. You had to be carrying them instead of them carrying you, right? Amen? Amen? Okay, and so, and so this young kid, 25 years old, is made king. And as we read about this kid, we understand, man, this is why the Lord chose him. He had a heart for the Lord, man. This kid was no, no play here. He loved God. 
And I just want to show you a couple of lessons here in 1 Chronicles chapter 30. And they all have to do with this. Ready? Engaged? 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 And prioritizing the battles. Maintaining your strength for the long battle that we have in life. Got your Bibles there? Let's pick it up. First Chronicles chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 30. Listen to what it says. And Hezekiah, he's already been made king already, all right? Sent to all Israel and Judah. See, see how it's split up? Did you see that? So there was a remnant left in Israel. Yes, Assyria had taken most of the people away, but there were still people hanging around and living there. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and also wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel. Your attention, please. I remind you that they had been away. Hezekiah becomes king, and in chapter 29, he decides to bring back the nation to have a relationship with God. Say amen if you're with me. You getting it? Hey, we're coming back to God, Hezekiah says. Look around, he says. This is in shambles. Lives are in shambles. Our cities in shambles. Physically and spiritually, we're coming back to God. Because this is the only um, sure way for us to be picked up again. Amen? Amen? It's like being sick and going to the doctor. And the doctor says to you, you're going to stay sick or you can take this fill in the blank shot pill this will make you better again what's your response going to be give me the pill give me the shot i want to get better again it's like that hezekiah said there's only one way that we're going to get back to at least being uh healthy we're never going to gain back the way that we were but at least we can get back healthy we got to come back to god and so they they they, they cleansed the temple they had forgotten the house of god the temple they cleansed it, they cleaned it, they scrubbed it, they took out all the garbage, and now they were getting ready to come back to God. You remember that in the Old Testament, having a relationship with God meant, listen, going to the temple. Amen? Having a relationship with God in the Old Testament, it, it, was, it culminated, it, 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 the bow was wrapped, if you will, when you came to the temple. That's where His presence was located. So if you and I were in the Old Testament, before Christ, and we were believers, our whole thing would be the day that we would go to the temple. Because that's when our relationship with God would be consummated, if you will. That's when our relationship with God would be like the icing on the cake, if you will. Amen? Not, not, not like that today. The Bible tells us that Christ dwells in us. I don't need to go to the one place and everybody's got to go there. No, 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 no. Listen, he's in me. Have you ever thought of that though? I was thinking about that like two days ago. How is that that the fullness of God could like be in here? How is that possible? Well, I don't have an answer for you. But, but, I, but this is my only answer. With God, everything is possible. How is it that the Spirit of God, because that, that's who God is, can be inside this man. How does that work? Like I, I, I was pondering that and I, I don't understand it. I, I believe it by faith, amen? We walk by faith and not by? It's not what I see, man. It's what I know. And so I was thinking, like, how is that possible, man, that this one, that if he would show up here, we would all like fall over backwards. If that one showed up here... All of you would, including me, we would all fall on our faces. Number one, in absolute fear, this place would rock and roll and would shake. And, and we would hear, you know, he speaks with lightning and thunder. When he speaks, it's lightning and thunder. His voice shakes the mountains. This is who he is. And... You're in here? How is that possible, Lord? I wouldn't think that this frail little body could sustain such a one, such a great one, such a majestic one, such an incredible one. 
Again, his voice, it shakes the mountains, man. When he speaks, literally the mountains shake. And you're in here? <laughs> it can only be God. Amen? It can only be God to do something like that. For man could never come up with something like that. And so today he's in here. However that looks and however that he's in here. And, he, and the Bible says that he's actually even given me his mind. I have his mind. In other words, I can choose to think like he thinks. I love that. Because I so often choose to think like, well, like I want to think. And I so often choose to think or, or, or want to think like the world thinks. And he says, you don't have to go that route. Well, how's that possible, Lord? Well, you have my mind. You can think like I think. How is it that you think in victory, with honor, with integrity, focused? My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, O God, and I will sing praises to you. Psalm 57, 7. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, O God, and I will sing praises to you. Amen? And so I have this incredible treasure that I can rely upon and walk with. Let it be. It's all good. And so these people are coming back to God. Look at verse 2. For the king and his leaders, Hezekiah and his leaders, and all the assembly in Jerusalem had agreed to keep the Passover in the second month. It was usually kept in the first month, but this is why they couldn't keep it in the second month. Ready? Verse 3. For they could not keep it at the regular time, which is what month? Tell me again. What month? First month. Because a sufficient number of priests had not consecrated themselves, nor had the people gathered together at Jerusalem. And the matter pleased the king and all the assembly. Notice verse 5. And so they resolved to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, since they had not done it for a long time in the prescribed manner. They were coming back to the Lord family. And they didn't have internet, and they didn't have texting, and so what they did was that they would send out messengers. And the messenger would come to your city and he would say, King Hezekiah has made a proclamation. What's the proclamation? We're coming back to the Lord. We're coming back to God. You who belong to God, come back to God. His desire is that you would come back to Him. Come back. That was the proclamation. Notice verse 7. And here's the warning. And don't be like your fathers and your brothers who trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers so that He gave them up to desolation as you see. By the way, circle, underline that verse. Close by, if you have room, I want you to write this or at least remember this. God will always strengthen your decision. God, verse 7, God will always strengthen your decision. God will always strengthen your decision. See, He's given you free will. God never made robots, and He didn't make one here. So He gives you, He, he allows you a decision. And whatever decision you make at whatever point in time, He'll strengthen it. By the way, the book of Romans tells us that. That the people, they kept, they stayed with their disobedience. They didn't want to listen to the Lord. And the Lord said, okay, here, I'm going to give you what you want. And he gave them over to their debased mind, he said. Amen? Yes. Paying attention to that. God will always strengthen your decision. He'll let you, man, go. You want to jump? Don't jump. Please don't jump. You're going to get hurt. Don't jump. I want to jump. Don't jump. I want to jump. Don't jump. I want to jump. Jump. And you jump, and guess what happens? You don't get hurt. And badly. And here the proclamation is come back to God and don't be like your fathers, man, because they insisted on being disobedient and God gave them up. Go. That's it. This is what you want, man. Go. God won't... won't 
God will not violate your free will. See, because he established free will from the beginning. And so God doesn't change like you and I might change. The other day I was on the highway and I remember, we're not on the highway, on one of the roads that I'm cruising on sometimes, and I remember that the speed limit was 55 and now it's 45. Okay, so what, right? No, no, stick with me here. There's a reason. Look, they, did, they do whatever they want, man. They did their statistics or whatever. They figured that, that, that a couple of the um, places where you come out of, it's more dangerous at 55, so they put it at 45. The speed limit changed. God doesn't change. He set the speed limit from day one, and it wasn't going to change now. And what am I saying to you? He gave you free will from the beginning. He doesn't change that. He's not going to violate that. See, because what he wants is for you to become his son and daughter. By choice. Right? He doesn't force you into, you're going to be my son, and you're going to be just like me, right? Some of us fathers do that, you know? (laughs) I'm guilty of that. Like, for a long time, like, I wanted my son to be a fighter, right? And he was for a season, remember, Henry? And, uh, and man, he was going to whatever, but then he wasn't doing good in school. <laughs> so I'm like, you're not fighting anymore. Because, you know, punishment. Get him what he doesn't like, right? Or get, make him pay with what he likes, right? So he would, you know, get back on track, right? Whatever, man, it didn't work. My point is... <laughs> That's another one that got a lot of spankies. <laughs> yeah, man, I wanted him to be a, you know, I just wanted a f- Why? Because I always wanted to, and I started, and I never finished because of, you know, got involved with the wrong people, whatever. So then what did I want? Come on. Come on. And the little guy could scrap. <laughs> and so, but it didn't work out. But that's the deal, family. See, God won't do that to you. He wants you to become what he wants you to become, but by your own free choice. And this is what was happening here. So he says, look, don't be like your fathers, man. Because you can choose to be like that. But the Lord's going to give you up to desolation because he's going to honor your request. Let's continue. Look at, verse, look at verse 8. Thank you. And when Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps. Wait, I'm completely off. I apologize, family. As usual, look at verse 8. Now, do not be stiff-necked, he told them, as your fathers were. But yield yourself. Hey, would you turn to somebody? Please tell them, yield yourself. Yield yourself, my bro. And if you receive the yield yourself in your mind, in your heart, say, I receive it. Lord, I'm going to yield myself to whatever you want, Lord. There's some things that, I need to, that need to be worked out in my life. Lord, I yield myself to you. I don't want to be stiff-necked any longer, Lord. But yield yourselves to the Lord and enter His sanctuary. In other words, His presence. Remember I told you, not perfect but present. Not perfect but present. Which He has sanctified forever. And serve the Lord your God that the fierceness of His wrath may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, notice family, fathers here today, single moms here today, notice For if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will be treated with compassion by those who lead them captive so that they may come back to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn His face from you if you return to Him. It's for our children, man. Verse 10. So the runners pass from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as Zebulun. Notice, family, look how sad. But they laughed at them and mocked them. I don't know, man, but that's sad to me. Nevertheless, some, some, can you say some? Some. It's always going to be a remnant, man. It's always going to be a small portion. From Asher and Manasseh and Zebulun, they humbled themselves. I circled, I underlined that last night with my wife and I. And I said to her, humble yourself. And she said to me, humble yourself. And I said to her, no, you humble yourself. (laughs) And you know what the the little female did? She looked back at me and said, no, you humble yourself. And I'm like, what? But you get the point. 
it was like, man, humble yourself. Bow down, Lord, man, forgive me. I have done wrong, Lord. I'm, I haven't followed you the way that I should follow you, Lord. I haven't, haven't sought you the way that I should seek you, Lord. You're merciful, you're gracious. Bring me back, Lord, to the place that you want me, Lord. Engaged, focused. Notice, family. Some did humble themselves and came to Jerusalem. And also the hand of God was on Judah. Remember I told you there was two, Israel and Judah? He was dealing with Israel, and now he turns to Judah. And also the hand of God was on Judah to give them singleness of heart. Remember? Two became one, or actually one became two, a lot weaker. Now he was become, giving them singleness of heart. Two were becoming what? One. To obey the command of the king and the leaders at the word of the Lord. Notice family, verse 13. Now many people, a very great assembly gathered at Jerusalem to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem. All those fake, fake places of worship, they tore them down. No more bowing down before things that are not of God. No more bowing down to money and disobeying God. No more bowing down to my business and disobeying God. No more bowing down to, I don't know, you fill in the blank for your life. And disobeying God. They tore all that down. We're coming back to God. No matter what that means. And they took away all the incense altars. And cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they slaughtered the Passover lambs on the 14th day of the second month. Notice this family. The priests and the Levites were ashamed. And they sanctified themselves and brought the burnt offerings to the Lord, to the house of the Lord. Your attention, please. I must touch on this. You know why the priests and the Levites were ashamed? Because they had been away from the Lord. They were the ones that were supposed to be leading the people. And they, were, and they had not been doing that. And all of a sudden, as they come into the presence of the Lord, when they're reminded, they're ashamed. I don't know if you've ever felt like that, but I certainly have. <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh. Sometimes I've had to go to my sons and, and my sons, and I've actually had to apologize because I've reacted in a way that's not necessarily the best way. You know, and I have felt ready. You know, what's the word? Ashamed. I'm supposed to be up here and I'm down here. I felt ashamed sometimes, not to mention some of the other stuff that I've done. And these Levites and these priests, all of a sudden they realize, oh man, I'm ashamed. I should have been leading, and instead I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm shifting it off to other people when it should be me, when I should be the one leading. And hey, wouldn't you know, yesterday I was talking to a pastor friend of mine, I went to eat yesterday on the beach um, and I picked up the phone and I called up a pastor friend of mine and we were going back and forth and you know he was telling me about certain things there and I was praying with him and for him and just kind of giving him a little bit of advice um, not that I know everything but just shooting some stuff at him as the Lord would give it to me and you know we were talking about the fact there in the book of First Timothy it says that in the last days in the what days? that, that, that men will be lovers of themselves. Men will be boasters. Um, that children, they would, um, they would have sharp teeth. I know I said this one time, and the pilgrim said, you know, you know which one we call a pilgrim right here, right? He's asleep, and that's exactly how we want him. Um, he, um, the last time that I mentioned that, I, I don't know if it was Josh or Jason, it was Josh. He looked at, my mom, he looked at his mom and was like, sharp teeth? And, and what that means is that children will be super disrespectful. Right? They will answer back. And, 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 and also, one of the things that really struck me, is said uh, that in the last days, that the love of many will grow cold. Like people won't have any affection or people won't care. Right? That's really what it comes down to. And you know, you're out on the streets, man, people don't care. They cut you off. They cut you off and then they tell you you're number one. Right? You, you, you know. Right? 
And you're like, dude, you cut me off, bro. And now you're telling me I'm number one? I should be telling you you're number one. You're the one that cut me off, right? But nobody cares anymore, man. Men don't open doors for ladies anymore. Um, it's just nuts, man. And by the way, that's not a big deal, I guess. You know, whatever, man. That's not the point. The point is that it's just, it, there's just men, the love of many have grown cold. But you know what? I was thinking about this last night as I was outside. Um, you know, when my son leaves for work, you know, I, I always go outside and, and to the best of my ability, and I watch his car drive off, you know, because I pray for him, you know. What can I tell you, man? I just pray for him, you know. And so, but I, I, I stay some time outside praying. And, you know, I realized something that that verse about the last days and that, that the love of many will grow cold, that's not about the world. The world has always been the world. People would have would cut your throat for five bucks today and they would have done it 30 years ago and they would have done it at the beginning of time. Amen? Look at these Assyrians that would grab you if you were a male and stick a hook, that, that you would literally have a hook and drag you with a horse all the way back to their land. And if you made it, you were strong enough and you were going to serve. And if you died, well, then you weren't strong enough. So who cares? So it's not about the world. It's talking about the church, man. That the church is just going to be in the last days not the church anymore. That we're going to look just like the world. And so here's my challenge to you, family, as we begin to close up shop. Which, by the way, you know what that, when a pastor says that, you know what that means, right? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Buckle up because you got about another hour. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I get bored myself, so I'll, I'll stop in a second, in a little bit. How do people see us, man? Are we just like the world? Do we look different to the world, to the, to the world than the world? That same place, remember I told you I was in Peru? And I remember the guy came up to me, and just stick with me here, because there's a purpose to the story. There's nothing else, you know, to it but that. I remember the guy said, man, you're a great teacher, which is, that's debatable or not. It doesn't matter. It's on that. Some days, yes, some days, no, because that's just the way it goes. But I looked at him and I thought in my heart, man, I don't want you to know me because of that. I want you to know me that I want you to look at me and say, man, that guy loves Jesus. That guy has been with the Lord. And so here's my challenge to you, man, because the Bible says that in the last days, the church as a whole is going to look just like the world. You're going to be able to look at a, a guy from the world and a guy that belongs to Jesus and you're not going to see any difference. Now remember what I told you, not perfect, but present, right? Amen? And so I was thinking about that last night because I was thinking about what he, the pastor and I spoke about and I thought, oh man, Lord, you know, I really don't, I, I don't want to be like, like, like the world, Lord. I, if anything, I want to I look different. I, I, want, I want my speech to be different. I want my thinking to be different because I know I'm going to stand before you, Lord, and at the end of the day, I'm going to give an account and I don't want to be just like the world, Lord. And listen, don't get on any trips here. This is not one of these. You better, listen, you better do whatever you want to do. That's between you and the Lord. But as for me and my house, listen, we're going to serve the Lord. Choose today who you want to serve. That's your problem. That's your business. You want help? I'm here for you, man. I'll grab you. We'll, we'll move together. That way, because two are better than one. Right? If, if, if you and I are, are, are hooked... Come here, bro. Please. Stand on my left side, bro. See, this guy can take it. He's a big boy. Look. See? This is a strong guy here. Look. Well, let's take two or three steps forward, right? Yeah? One, two, three. See, I'm a lot stronger with him holding me up. I'm a lot stronger if I'm hooked onto this boy. Right? Let's go back. See, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to tell you. No, bro, you're supposed to hold me up. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, like a man, bro. There you go. See? Like that. Like a man. Like a man. And so, see? See? Man, I'm a lot stronger with this guy hooked onto me, man. I'm a lot stronger doing life with this guy. He's a lot stronger doing life with me. Amen. Bottom line. 
See, because if he starts slipping or if I start slipping like that, man, boy, there you go. Hold me up. Mm -hmm. That's it. Start slipping a little bit. There you go. See, he's a little bit stronger than me, but we'll, we'll oh, get him on. <laughs> we'll get him on man style because I'm not going to let him fall. Amen. Amen? Amen? Thank you, bro. See, see, that's my point. I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be like the world. I want people to look and say, man, look, strength. Strength. Different. Because in the last days, the Bible says, look, they're going to look at the church and it's going to be just like everybody else. And this is why I tell you all the time, listen, man. This is why we stick to this. Because this is going to confront you. This is not going to tell you, hey, you're stealing? Keep stealing. As long as we're friends, keep stealing. Heaven, no. Stop stealing. We don't want to be like everybody else. We don't want to be like the, like the Bible says. There's too many like that. Got your Bibles here. Let's close up shop. Thank you. Remember that these men were ashamed. Verse 16. And they stood in their place according to their custom. According to the law of Moses, the man of God. And the priest sprinkled the blood received from the hand of the Levites. Notice... For there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites had charge of the slaughter of the Passover lambs for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them to the Lord. And that's the point of being together and being arm in arm and being present. Because even though I might not be clean, you're holding me up and you're making me clean and you're encouraging me to be clean. Amen? Amen. I jumped ahead of it. Verse 18, for a multitude of the people, many from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, but yet they ate the Passover contrary to what was written. Notice, that could have been an issue, but notice the next verse, or the next line, but Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, may the good Lord provide atonement for everyone. Again, one holding up another. Did you see that? Did you see that? Say amen if you're with me. One holding up another. Not perfect, man, but present. Because then I can hold you up. And listen, then you can hold me up. Who prepares the, his heart to seek God. The Lord God of his fathers, though he is not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. He's not perfect, but we're going to roll with him. Because we got his back. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Notice that family. He healed the people. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. He healed the people. So that, hey, can you look to somebody, tell them you're healed. You're healed, but receive it. Receive it. Because it, it, has, to land on good, it has to land on good soil. Amen? Amen. I, I can have seeds in my house, but if they're sitting on my counter and I haven't planted them, they're, they're good for nothing. Even though they're good seed, they do nothing. So let that heart receive the truth that in fact you are healed. So the children of Israel who were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. Notice that there was rejoicing. Of course, they had been healed. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day. Singing to the Lord accompanied by loud instruments. Notice verse 22. And Hezekiah gave encouragement to all the Levites who taught the good knowledge of the Lord. What, was the, what, what did he tell them? Keep teaching the good knowledge of the Lord. And they ate throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. In other words, Lord, I've sinned. Have mercy on me, Daddy. Then the whole assembly, notice this, agreed to keep the feast another seven days. Pachanga, baby. Not just seven days, another seven days. Break out the whiskey. Oh, no. The whiskey? Did the pastor just say that? No, you just heard, you just heard that. that. I never said that. Should Christians drink? I don't know. You decide. 
Should Christians dance? <laughs> some should and some shouldn't. <laughs> right? Some of you like this, you shouldn't. <laughs> some of you that can move, you should. <laughs> Amen? What did you learn today at church? That some Christians can dance and some can't. <laughs> Let's move on. Notice. Seven days, another seven days, verse 24, for Hezekiah, king of Judah, gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep. And the leaders gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep. And a great number of priests sanctified themselves. In other words, they came back to the Lord. These men that were supposed to be leading and weren't leading, they came back. I'm going to lead now. Period. No more. By the way, real quickly, when it comes to leadership, I want to remind all the fathers here today that you're called to be leaders. I want to remind all the men today here that you're called to be leaders, even if you're not a father. You're always called to be a man of integrity and honor. I want to remind you ladies that the older ladies, and not necessarily in age, but in the Lord, are called to teach the younger ladies. Say amen if you're with me. Let it be known that I told you that. Verse 25, Then the whole assembly of Judah rejoiced, also the priests and the Levites, all the assembly that came from Israel, the sojourners and who came from the land of Israel and those who dwelt in Judah. And notice, family, verse 26, And so there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, there had been nothing like this in Jerusalem. I love it. What a, what a scene that must have been. Verse 27, Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to His holy dwelling place to heaven. Amen? Amen. We close. I want to remind you. You don't need to be perfect. As a matter of fact, you won't be on this side of eternity. But it's good for you to be present. And before you get caught up with any trips about, you better be a church. Yeah, that's important because the gathering of the faithful is always important because as you saw, if, Alex, if, if, you, if, if I'm holding you up and you're holding me up, my fall is going to be a lot less uh, hurtful than if I was by myself. Amen? Period. That's the bottom line. This is why the Lord actually instituted the gathering. We call it church. Um, there's a Greek name for it, and I'm not even going to bother telling you because it's inconsequential. It's inconsequential. God ordained a gathering of people because He knew that, man, there's going to be a remnant. There's only going to be a short number. You know, even in big churches, there's only really a short number of, uh, a, a small number of people that actually make the church run. It just is what it is. Financially, um, uh, spiritually, it just is what it is. You can have 100 people coming and 17 are the ones that uphold the church. I mean, it just is what it is. But it's not about that. It's just about, yeah, church is important. And it's just a manifestation of your relationship with God. Period. But listen, I want you to do something, man. I want you to focus in on being present this year. And I'm not into resolutions or any of that stuff. Maybe you are. Praise the Lord. I'm really not into resolution. I don't sit down and write down anything. I just think it in my head. I'm like, you know what, Lord? I just got to get going with certain things, and I'm going to, and that's all there is to it. So let me challenge you with being present. Not just here. Here's important. But you being present with the Lord. I don't want you to be ashamed, embarrassed, under any darkness. Nothing un in the dark is of the Lord. You with me? Yeah. Everything's in the light. If it's in the light, then it's exposed and there's nothing to be ashamed about. But if you're, hey, something's wrong. I can tell you that right now. And by the way, I know from my own life, the times that I have been like this, <laughs> I'm up to no good. Straight up. I don't want you to know about something because I'm up to no good. Straight up. That's it. Be present. Be present. And the last thing that I wanted to share with you 
and I didn't touch on it, is to, in wisdom, pick your battles. Did you see, Hezekiah, some of these people weren't cleansed, and normally, according to the law, you would not be able to partake. But that wasn't the time for them to say no. These people truly wanted to come back. What did Hezekiah do? He said, come. This is a battle that I'm not going to battle with because it's going to end up in, 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 in a losing. It's going to lose. It's a losing battle for everybody, everybody involved. I'm going to pray for you so that you would be able to partake. Did you see that? I didn't mention it to you at the time. I didn't really plan to speak on First Chroni Second Chronicles 30 today. But <coughs> he chose his battles. I say that to you because I want you to be wise in what you're choosing to spend your time on. Again, I'm not talking about that you can't watch the dolphins. Or you, well, we're not watching the dolphins anymore, but that you can't watch. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't get caught up with that. I'm talking about, you know, what, what you're going to battle with, what you're going to let your mind go off on, what you're going to spend the, the energy in here on. Is it going to be junk? Is it going to be anxiety? Is it going to be bitterness? Is it going to be... Uh, I declare to you and I submit to you, let, spend it on the Lord. Look, last night it even hit me, man. I was laying there. I woke up and, um, and, and I was up. And... Wouldn't you know that all, you know, all the stupid thoughts start coming? All the dumb things start coming. Like I'm talking like really dumb things like... <sighs> I'm going to tell you. <laughs> if you don't come back, I love you. Send me a text. <laughs> don't just leave. Okay, at least send me a text, right? Don't, don't just leave. Send me a text. Um... These are the stupid thoughts that come. Cancel church tomorrow. <laughs> Seriously. No, no, no. For, I'm telling you. Cancel church tomorrow. What does it matter? Who cares? You think anybody's going to lose any sleep if I text you? This is me. In my, uh, who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Who cares? Who, who's worried about? Nobody. This is my mind. I said, you know what? That's not of the Lord. I'm, I'm changing that. And I started focusing on the Lord. Man, you died on the cross for me. You saved this man who really deserves, like, like most of you here. You know how we joke around here that most of the men here, this is like a perfect church because it's only like the worst of the worst, right? No, it's true. It's true. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. This just horrible, but, but the Lord, man, we're like his trophies. And Lord, you forgave me for that. Gosh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord, you know that my marriage about like, I'm terrible with time, man. It was done like about, I don't know, 12 years ago? I don't know what the heck it was. It was done. My marriage was done. As in done. <clears throat> And I have this beautiful house. Um, man, I built a pool there. Not me, but you know, we got a pool. I got a driveway. Listen, I got a garage. I know you're going to say big whoop. No, no, that was a huge whoop to me. When I bought that house, this was the prerequisite with my wife. My house has to have a garage. Because it's going to be my workout room, <laughs> right? It didn't work out room. It's, <laughs> it's storage. <laughs> It, the workout room didn't work out. It's storage. Actually, no. Praise God that I finally laid down my foot and she had to clean it out. My car, my car sits in there now. Anyway, um, and so 10 years ago, man, like I could have lost all that. Where would I have been now, you know? Where would I have been? Yeah, I could have been in another house. Maybe, please stick with me, you know doing life, but that wouldn't have been God's plan. That wouldn't have been God's best. Amen? God will take your ashes and make them into gold for Him, for His glory, but He's got the best plan for you. And, you know, I just started thinking about that. Lord, man, you know, you're so good to me, Lord. I don't deserve any of this, Lord. You know, so I shifted that thinking, and I started thinking about Him. 
And wouldn't you know that there was a peace and there was a joy that came over me. There was a rest that came over me, right? Because with all that junk that I was thinking about, I started getting anxiety, you know, like, and you start getting bitter because I might, whatever emotion that I might have, it turns into anger. I know none of you are like that. I know none of you are like that, right? Some of your emotions turns into joy. Mine turns into, man, I want to punch you in the face, man. That's, that's, that's how I shift. But like this. And so I'm like, Arr. and then I said, no, you, Lord, not perfect, but present. present, present in your presence, thinking about you, Lord, thinking about you on the cross, Lord, thinking about the fact that I have money in my pocket, that I have a meal in my, on, on, my, on my table if I want one. Lord, look at my house, Lord. Look at this roof, Lord. It's cold outside, but I'm warm inside, Lord. This is you, Lord. You're so good to me, Daddy. You're so good to me, Abba. And then I went like this, and I touched her. And I said, and she's still here, Lord. You're so good to me, Lord. This, is what, this was your best plan, Lord. Be present, family, in the things of the Lord. Amen? I'm out of material. You and me are going to see each other after the service. Oh, no. I just remember who you are. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I, I would, but no, not this time. No. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that this time. And I love you, my bro. Hey, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we uh, thank you again for this beautiful day that you've allowed us, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, that by the power of your Spirit, Father, we would have um, understood, Lord, in the inner man, that which you have for us today, Lord. That you don't want to be, you don't want us conformed to this world, but that you want our mind to transform, Lord, by the renewing of your spirit in our hearts, Lord. And so we receive it here today, Lord, understanding and knowing, Lord, that we're not perfect, but we're going to be present, Lord. That we're not perfect, but we're going to be progressing, Lord. That we're not perfect, but we're going to have victory, Lord. In you and because of you, Lord. And we're appreciative of that, Lord. And I pray for all those here today, Lord. If there's anybody here, Lord, that doesn't know you, that today would be the day, Lord, that they ask you for forgiveness, Lord, even as we saw these priests and these Levites and this, and this whole nation come back to you, Lord. I pray that they would come to you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness and, and allow you into them, Lord. Even right now, Father. And Lord, we close by proclaiming loudly that which is already in our hearts, that Satan has been defeated, we have been redeemed, and that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen? Amen. The Lord bless you, keep you, shine His face upon you, and continue to grant you peace. And hey guys, the men, here's the bad news.